Well, this is a bit of a special one, guys, because it appears, and I was only told this by the guys commenting, I've now passed a thousand fishing films, which was a target I did want to achieve. I wanted to be the first British guy to do that, and I believe, I think, I am. Certainly at my age, because most of the YouTubers are young people. I don't know anybody who's over 70 pumping out fishing films, all-round fishing films, trout, sea, course, big game, beach, whatever. I've always done the lot because I've been a fishing writer since about 1968. But it's only down to you guys watching the films. So thanks to the awesome army for watching them. And I appreciate that. I know we've helped a lot of people through sort of sticky times when it was a bit grim. I mean, all those lockdowns, I seem to like watching those films. And of course, you can go back through the playlist. I don't even know what the first ones were. A thousand fishing films seems crazy. So thanks, guys. I'd also like to thank my daughter for putting up with me, my wife for putting up with me, Jack's the dog for putting up with me, Emmy for putting up with me, Mike for putting up with me and helping with the computer because I'm fairly basic with that stuff. I don't do any of the social media stuff, Mike handles all that, but I do the fishing, filming, editing, all on my own. And that's why it's the same as it is. That's why you get the odd beep in there. So thanks for watching, guys. Let's see if I can get, well, I don't think I'm gonna get another thousand, am I? But thanks for watching it, and hopefully you enjoy this one. It's a bit special anyway, because it's one of the Man Alone series, which a lot of you guys enjoy out there. It's a long one. It's an hour and a quarter long. It was one I just did last autumn, was it November, October, November. I didn't keep it back for this, I just thought, oh, that was a really good film, I enjoyed fishing that day, I'll put it up for the guys. And I thought, now, with a thousand fishing films, uh, now's the time to put it up. Well guys, you can gather where I am, it's a Man Alone series again. I'm over on a self-drive boat, real nice boat, looks like nobody's driving it. <laughs> and uh, it's Mark Glanner's boat, one of the rentals. You see the setting I've got here. So let's get out there. What a day it is. A late autumn, not quite early winter day. I've never fished at this time of year before, never fished this late. But Mark gave me an absolutely spot on weather forecast. So I took the long drive over. And as you can see, unbelievable setting. There's not many times that you get to see and have a flat day like this. So what we're going to catch, I don't know, I'm going for a bit of everything. The tide is pouring out here. You maybe you can see it on that boy there as I'm going along. I'll go up between the port and start, but boys going would help. Obviously I'm filming. So I'm going to aim to go out deep because the river is very coloured from rainwater flooding they've had. So I'm going to run out thinking I'm going to find some clear water, that's what I'm hoping. You can see there the tide is absolutely steaming out. Big spring tides. Over there is the four men alone, well five men counter the coxswain rowing, so there's four men alone and a coxswain in the boat. They're out exercising on a Sunday morning, why not? All right, let's open this puppy up and get as fast as we can go. What a 
grey day. Mind you, we need some fish to make it a what a real day. The fact I'm actually getting out in a rental boat at this time of year is something else. Be interested to see if there's any fish out there. I'm going to try, hopefully, for some giant by going to the denizens of the deep, the dab hole. I'm going to go and see if I can catch some big dabs because they have some really big ones over here. Yes, folks, the shades are on at this time of year. <laughs> I thought I thought I'd put them away for the whole year. And that's where we're going out around that headland over there, way out past a normal pollock spot. Man alone in a boat. And I'm loving every minute of it. So just looking along this coastline, you can see here absolutely immense cliffs. And it's like cut right back into the land there. It's very, very impressive. And it is very high. Just where I'm pointing in there, there is a small beach. Now, I've never actually landed the boat on that beach. And um, I guess that's the only way you'll get there. I don't know any way whether you could climb down from the right-hand side. Probably be a really good beach to fish from. It's a lot, lot bigger boulders there than you think. And look at the rock slide that have come down, just right in front of the bow of the boat. You can see that was the latest sort of rock slide where I'm zooming in there. It's collapsed down, but very, very impressive bit of scenery. I got the day to get right round this headland, and you know it's worth going there if you do get the chance. And I love all that geological colours in the rocks there. It's a spot worth fishing for sure. That, folks, is a sight to behold. You've got to consider yourself honoured to be able to get out in a boat and actually see scenes. Look at this. Is it the smell of my clothing? Or what? What have I done to deserve that? Right, let's get out there and let's get a bait in the water. So, first job is a belly strip of squid. I'm going to drain those off because I want to keep them chilled. But chilled enough as it is. Save the head. I'm looking for strips. That's all I'm looking for. The gunk goes over the side for the poor beagle sharks, which I never seem to catch now, but I do try. Peel that off. And give it a wash. Now I'm going to put some little strips on there, long thin strips. I'm using small hooks about size four fresh waters, I guess. 
And these dabs are about the finest tasting sea fish, I think. Now look, I've got that stones bomb thing. I've got it clipped on so it slides. I'm hoping it's going to bump across the bottom. It's nothing to do with all the carpy warpy it looks natural and all that business. It's round, that's why I'm using it, so that it bumps over, hopefully doesn't snag up. One hook here with a bead, as you can see. One there, we've got one yellow and one pink. What I'll do is bait both of these rigs up. I might put a third one down with a big fillet just to see what's down there. I'm gonna motor back upwind. I've been watching the drift, sort of going inshore a bit, even with the wind. Very often, if you use a strong wire hook, I think this one's called a Sea Prince. Can't tell you who makes it. Don't know. But it was called a Sea Prince. It's an old one, it's about 40 years old. This one's a Carpy Warpy one. Who knows, but it's quite a good bend in the wire. Might be one of those grips ones looking at it. And they got a good strong wire. I'm into strong wires. Right, so now, I'm going to motor back up. I've come down here with the wind. Not a huge amount of time, but I have covered probably, I'll go by that boy up there, 100 metres, and the time it's taken me to tackle up. So let's motor back up, drop down and see what happens. Okie dokie, I may be wrong, I may need a lead. I do have the lead, so I'm going to let this down nice and slow, because I don't want it tangling up. Various different colours of line on there. This, by the way, is Frankenrod 2, otherwise short known as Frank 2 and I aim to get it bent on something big today. Not these dabs, I'm just using it because it's uh, arm on the bottom. Not as deep as I thought. Now, depending how fast the... Oh my God, now there's a fish on there, I'm not joking. I had a bite then. I'm gonna just put it in gear. Look, 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 look. watch over on top. Let's see if I can get the bite for you guys. Look, there's a little tap. What the? Right, now I was just going to say, if you start dragging when you hit the bottom, the line's going to do this, the weight will be off the bottom. It must be on the bottom, it must be bumping, so don't be afraid to let some line back, like I'm doing now. You see, I'm letting some line back, just slowly. Clouds are coming, I'm glad I photographed those cliffs and I did. Right, let's get the other rod over. That was a bite, very small fish it felt like, but hey ho, they all count. Same with this with a fixed pull. I'm gonna be drifting this way with the wind and the tide. So I'm just gonna let this down, being a fixed pull, it's easy to let it down too fast, it spins. We do not want spinning baits tangled up with the main line. You will catch zero. It's got to be laying nice, the lead hits here, or the weight hits there, and the trace goes back, and you're putting that trace with the baits across the seabed, hoping that the bumping along the seabed attracts the attention of a fish. 100% had a small, tiny fish bumping on there. Now we could, being out here in the wild Atlantic way, we could actually get some weird species. We could get different types of gurnards down here. That's on the bottom. You could get probably well, it's coming on early winter, could be getting whiting. I don't know. I don't live here. I'm going to just wind this one up and just see if I can feel anything because that was a rattling bite straight away. Nothing on there. I feel I'm going to put a bigger bait down there, guys. You don't know what... Look. That, that way, right? Next stop, America. That is the Atlantic, wild Atlantic way ocean. There could be anything coming in here. There could be a giant common skate, anything in this bay. So you're gonna put a bigger hook out there with a nice fillet of mackerel. Big hook. 
This is actually a needle hook for trolling for a sailfish, but I'm using it because that's the first thing that came out of the tackle box. Little split there is quite important so that when this shank goes down, see it? You'd be pulling this way, the hook's exposed. I can actually put that squid head on there as well. Look at that juicy squid head. Now, there is a bait, look at that setting. Now there is a bait to die for. Mackerel fillet, squid head, even got the eye there. A four ounce lead and I think I'm, a, I'm away. Away with the fairies. I've got to make the most of today guys, this will be the last trip before winter in a small boat for me. I could cast it, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to let that bump along the bottom. Of course there's an excellent chance of snagging, but where dabs are generally it's sort of cleanest grounds, sand. So hopefully uh, I won't lose an awful lot of gear. The wind's picking up. I don't want too much wind because that's going to make me drag the boat too fast or the boat's going to cover the ground too fast and it's going to make the weights lift up. And if it bumps, if I use a heavier weight, which will anchor it on the bottom, it's going to be bumping so fast where I go a fast drift, the dabs won't be able to catch it. Okay. I think I'd better check that for... Uh, bait. Also check where I'm drifting. I think. Have a look at this bait. Let's check it. Just in case they stripped it. That's annoying because that wind coming up means the stones might not work. Ah, oh, bottom hook strip guys. That's why I said check the baits. So that's one bite to Mr. Yellow. just pop it over, turn it around and drop it down. Invariably when you're on a faster drift they'll hit the back hook first because that's coming up behind it as you're bumping it this way the fish are coming up behind it so they're going to find that back hook first that's a general thing I find when you've got a two hook flowing trace like that. It's all a bit of fun and the wind has come right up. Yeah, we're holding pretty well on that uh, beach area. Worst comes to the worst, I'll go back up to that buoy. Or I could even try anchoring here, I'm not sure. It'd be great with the anchor. I think we've got our first customer. I think the first one's come through the door. Here we go, here we go. 100% a fish. Is it going to be Donald the Dab? It's kicking, it's kicking, it's kicking. Oh, come to tea, these things, if they're big dabs. I've got a feeling this might be a dogfish, unfortunately for me. Mind you, unusual little scraps. Dogfish would come up there, you know, far in the, higher in the water. It's a dab. Oh my God, it's double dabs. Oh, look at the size of these dabs. Oh my God. <laughs> look at this. Wouldn't you give your right arm to be catching these? off the beach in England and the dabs I don't know whether you're going to see it this way if I swing them into the sun you might be able to see with that one look you can see through it you can always see through the dab that's how you tell them look at these apps look at that set in there people big dabs come to tea that one might I think it's one on that as well wowie Here we go, folks. Double dabs. I'm just watching the drift going past these pot boys, and I've got a reef here, which I'm coming up on. So I've had a nibble on here. I feel there's a fish on. Tim fight even be a double whammy of dabs. Oh dear, if I get back to Trish, maybe. Oh, only one, but there you go. So just at a point of interest, people, there's not many people do the man alone stuff, really, is there? 
you out here, but you need to learn, you need to know this stuff. That rope, the tide is going this way, so the rope, you can see are two boys, that tells me that the second one here is, is floating, and the first one on the right is just pulled down a tad, so the current is pulling on the rope underwater there, so his rope's up here, it probably in fairness is at the other end up here, that one I passed, but just if you're drifting, although I'm drifting here like this, fantastic, what a good spot for wrasse or even bass, who knows, but you see how that land comes down on a finger like this, that will continue out under the seabed for a while. So if I'm drifting past that, you might think you're going past the rocks. And in fact, you'll just drag all your gear in the rocks there. I'll just come up for the second drift and look. If I can get, these are the bites. See if you can spot the bite. There's a bite, see it? Just show for beginners, just get an idea what's going on. They're chewing at that squid hammering away as it's bumping along the seabed like it's bump 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 they're coming up behind it perhaps they're seeing the bead perhaps they're not it might just attract them and as we're drifting along they're coming up behind it nipping at it like that and let's hope they eventually hang on occasionally i'll give it a pull just like this sweep it up drop it down and then when it hits the seabed the second time very often you'll get that take also for those small boat people who want to do the man alone thing just note how quickly this has changed. Look, the clouds have come. Scudding across the sky, as they say. It's that field in, I saw the first few clouds on the horizon there, so I knew there was some breeze coming off the hill. Nothing horrendous, obviously, but just be aware how quickly things do change at sea. And you can even see the cloud going across the, uh, the cliffs there. So I don't need much more wind than this to be able to get the right speed of drift. just nice to be out. I wonder. I have one rod left. Should I hang some feathers over the side and get one of the legendary elusive mackerel? Probably none about. They've all been swept up by the uh, super trawlers and the tuna. They must eat their way through millions of mackerel. They are the bluefin tuna are like eating machines. They eat a whole shoal. They're gone. Ten knots. They're down the coast eating another shoal. It's a different angle for you guys. I've actually sent Smith out on the pole there. Smith, don't you dare drop that camera. Just hang on. Honestly, honestly, you'll be fine. The sellotape will hold. It will. Unless it rains. I'll give you guys a different picture of the boat. I think I might be not on the bottom. I'm going to have to check. Oh, there. I might be able to see the rod top there. I've had a couple of... Uh, Hammering bites on it. Yeah, there, 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 there. Hopefully you saw that, guys. I don't know. It was indeed a bite and a nibble on the white rod. Oh, Bluey here. I'm going to call that Bluey. There's the bite. There's a bite. Why he's got one on there, mate? Look at that. It's on there. Hammering away. Eating his way up the old squid. We're going to wind that sheila in in a minute. And Bluey, on the other hand, Appears a bit motionless, mate. Come on, Bluey, get in there. I didn't think I'd drifted that far. Am I fishing off Australia? S Smith, <laughs> are you okay up there, man? You're fine, are you? You're doing what with bullets? You're sh old bullets. <laughs> And now you can see, folks, hopefully, a man alone does not speak with forked tongue. I am alone on the ocean. No bites other than that white rod. I feel I should wind in, guys. I think there might be one on Whitey. Just so you know, I aim to get three or four, hopefully, because I want to go back to Trish's at Court McSherry at Wood Point and see if she'll lend me a frying pan and I want to try and cook them up because they are the world's best eating fish, in my opinion. Right, let's swallow the old guy and see what's on there. I feel there's one. Might just be a small one. The other thing, I'm, I think I need to go closer inshore. That first drift was, oh, this one is pulling. Here he comes, here comes dinner. Or oh. well, maybe I'll send him back down. Here we go. 
a little bit bigger. So we let this one go. So I've had five now because I've filmed the others, but I didn't film a couple of smaller ones. Well, I've come, you won't see it from there, I have actually come inshore a little bit. I'm wondering if I'd lose a bit of sort of wind by coming inside that point there. I've had another dab, but nothing of what I would call pan size. I would like to, you know, be plowing through a few more, I have to say, and nothing on that big bait bumped along the bottom. Whether it would be better anchored, I don't know. Oh. Bluey's on there. There's a little nibble on, on Mr. Bluey. The old blue rod there. That's actually a popping rod for things like jacks. That would be ideal for jacks. Small yellowfin tuna. Well, really anything popping off the surface. Not here though. White here's coming back. He's heard that, so they're sort of equal. Little rattling bump on that one. I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer because I'm wondering if that rise and fall of the stone although it's not snagging maybe it's not pinning that bait on the bottom and they are a flatfish they have to have the bait on the bottom they're not really coming off the seabed much to grab anything I haven't put any feathers down with the rod down the end just bumping on the bottom that has a lead I can see it it goes tap 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 there I can see that's that's what I call hard on the bottom which is where I like to uh, keep the bait skipping along the seabed I've got a yam on my boat, actually, as you guys. Yamahas. I don't know what this one is. Eight, is it an eight? It's a four-stroke. I've got a feeling they're about an eight. Eight horsepower. Generally, I'm not going to say how reliable they are, because I'm out of sea, but you know what I want to say. Good boy. Good boy. There's a couple of other mates I wouldn't give house room to, been on foreign trips. Some have been really dangerous couple of makes, I won't mention the makes, black canopy ones, oh my god, breakdowns 20 miles out on the Gordo Bank, Pacific sail fishing, uh, no air sea rescue out there, <laughs> and you can't row back. I've got to say guys, it is an idyllic setting here for the old man alone. Now, if I get another couple of dabs, that's fine. I've got something to try for a cook-up, because they are really a profoundly good, when, when cooked fresh, sea fish. I'll probably go and maybe try a bit of anchoring for you people, see what I can catch on the bottom. But I'm waiting for the, the, the cleaner flood tide to come and move inshore, and then I'm going to go in and see if I can pick a pollock off for you. So it's sort of a mixed bag day today, a bit of everything. It's just, to be honest, a pleasure to be out. The thing is, when you're fishing alone, you don't know the area, you don't have an echo sound, you don't have the wisdom of, you know, knowledge of the area. When you're drifting, it's got pros and cons, like all types of fishing. If you're drifting, you're covering a lot of ground, so the chances are you could stumble into a little fishy area. The downside is, unless you get really good landmarks, you might not find that area again. And also, you catch the fish here and you keep drifting, you're drifting maybe away from the fish. It's not good all the way on that drift, you know? So when I first stop, boom, straight on fish. So I guess I'm going to give two more drifts of this and now I think I'm going to maybe try the anchor and just see. I realise, of course, that you catch way more fish, bigger fish, etc., if you go out on charter boats anywhere around the UK, or most charter boats. But there's something about being captain of your own vessel for the day. You count those fish as yours because you make the choice of where to go, what bait to use, what rig to use, when to move. It's just a whole different level of satisfaction if you go out in a boat, not as you don't have to do man alone, you can go out, a lot of people safer go, two people in a boat. But there is a huge amount of satisfaction, that's why I do it, you know, is because I like my own company. And there's a lot of satisfaction in doing it.
at my age I'm very lucky to be doing it. I might actually be back in the zone a bit more now because I've had a pick up on this uh, big rod. I think it's probably a dogfish. Something's still there. Nah, it's not very big, but it is. God, can you imagine if it's a dab? The dab that's required to take this is unheard of. I don't think there's anything there at all. But it was banging away at it. Unless it was dab pulling at the squid tentacles. No, it must be a small fish. I'm going to drop these uh, down on a lead in a minute just to try that. Not altogether happy with the stones yet. I think I'm okay. I think I'm on the bottom. Now give it another hour and then I'll go looking for a pollock and a conger. Possibly in that order. Let's leave that one down there. Very often those dabs will take, pull that up for you. Those dabs will take and just sort of bump along, keeping pace with you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not altogether sure about those stones now. Let's check this one. Ah, this might have a fish on it. This might have a fish on it. This has a fish on it. Indeed it has. This might have two fish on it. One hopes it's a dab. Could of course be a dogfish. It is. Oh no, that's a keeper. It's a keeper in another line, I think. I've got my other line. There we go, guys. Another fine dab there. Better fish this time on the big bait. Might be a doggy. Could be a bull hus or strap conger eel. It's a doggy. And of course he's gone by a lion. Oh sweetness. Oh he fell off. Well that's sort of the result. Got a fish on this time. On those small hooks, I don't know what it is. Could be. That was. I might have to anchor because that was feeding the uh, feeding the bait back. We find out. Don't know if I got my other line. I don't care. There's a big fat dab on here. Lovely. It's coming in deep. Might just be a dogfish, but it is in fact. Oh, I thought it would have been a big bad dab, it's a doggy. Oh. Nice size doggy though. Get him on light tackle, small hooks. There you go. It's just nipped at that bait. Oh. Something grabby there. No, no, yes. Let's check this other thing out, people. Might be a pack of dogfish. Yeah. It's old Frank too again. Got to get in on the action, hasn't he? Got to get in on the action. For those who don't know, this is a broken cart rod that I've used the top section of a broken rod and the top bottom section of another broken rod glued them together and put some rings on it some corks and a wheel fit well the real fittings there anyway that's a long dogfish I have to say well that is a long doggy that one Very dark one as well. 
All right, it's getting back, and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to go inside a bit more. Well, I think the moving shore has uh, got me at least one fish on here. I'm not sure whether it's a dog or dabs. I've got to be perfectly honest. I've stopped trying to uh, pick which fish I've got. Oh, it's somewhere different. It's like a whiting. And it's... Oh, <laughs> oh, you couldn't do that if you wanted to. He's actually... Wait for this. He's fallen off the hook. And you think they'd be lucky for him. But no. He's fallen in the live bait bucket. <laughs> oh, no. Let's let him go, mate. There we go. It wasn't his lucky day, and then suddenly it was. Just about to move, and lo and behold, another dab comes to town. I love it, but they are slow. I've got to say, they are slow. I'm going to have one more drift on the inside, and then I'm going to clear off and do uh, some different fishing. Well, it's gone uh, pretty quiet. I've come right inside. You can probably see here. No, I'm right in the back of this, uh, it's like half a volcano when you look at it, isn't it? Absolutely, where well, it's collapsed, I don't know how high it is, it's one of the highest sort of sea cliffs down this area. I'm gonna take a stab and say 500 feet. Somebody look it up, see what it is. I wouldn't wanna fall off it, put it like that. I think the dad patrol plane is up there. Second time he's come over. Might be Coast Guard, I've no idea. So I'm gonna give it a little drift here. It is, uh, it is gone very quiet as you can see. Nothing going there. Only a man up there. The wind's fairly consistent, you know, it's nothing bad in that. Just puts a nice ripple on the water. But it's slack tide. I know it's slack tide. It might might just be turning and flooding this way because my legs aren't bumping much, my weight's on the bottom. So normally if this wind wasn't here, the flood tide would push me that way. I'm not going anywhere because I can see by my landmarks behind me. So I figure they're sort of balancing each other out. The tide's going this way, the wind is coming that way. And until the tide gets stronger, I'm not going to be going anywhere. So the bait is sitting on the bottom I'm not covering much area. Just keep an eye on the rocks down there because I'm drifting straight into them. If you look, you see, always look that way as well. It's always tempting to fish into the wind because that's the way you're drifting. But do take, if you're close to shore, a look behind you. Otherwise, in about 20 minutes time, there's a very large bang. Right, well, I've moved from the cliffs way up there. Um, that sort of died on me with the tide, so I've just taken a gamble and there's a reef here that's exposed um, well, it's exposed at low and high tide depending on the big storms. I'm going to have a run up and down here for basically try and catch a pollock. I've seen a couple of seabirds, I think they're shearwaters and cormorants, the odd gull. Nothing as though they were mackerel on the surface. I'm going to be using slightly different technique which is slow trolling if you can see that. I've got a boom like you would normally go pollock fishing and on the end of that, I'm going to have I've got a sidewinder shad there. I might just get lucky and uh, hook into a decent sized pollock. Same on this rod. The slight difference is I've got a red gill there. Now this one has no weight in it, so it should hopefully not snag. My weight is there. They've both got the same size weights, you'll notice there, the same size weights, but the shad has got a weight inside it. So I'm guessing, our Bluey here, our Bluey, this boy, he's the one that's going to get snagged. Right, I've got to set up here. I'm going to take you around the island first quite close to show it to you, um, and then we'll start fishing. I'm basically sort of waiting for the tide. It's the last, really, a sort of throw of the dice, thinking that I might be able to pick a pollock off here.
going to go in there slowly and uh, Smith, keep driving the boat. Don't hit the rock. It's that big brown thing sticking out of the water. He's going straight for it, that boy. I'll go in slow. Um, you will get seals on there occasionally. And um, cormorants, other birds resting up there. To be honest, I don't like seeing the birds on the rocks because I figure they should be out working. They know stuff we don't, don't they? So there's a chance, perhaps there's dead tide here and uh, not much happening, but I'll, I'll take you in close and see what I can film. Okay, the one on the outside here, I think they call Little Horse, I think, or the Foal or something like that. And this one, just as I'm pulling the camera now, you see is the head of the horse and the back piece is supposed to be horse rock. There's a seal. Okay, you can see him there. Just popped his head up. He's heard the engine noise. He is that brown blobby thing there. There go round and he'll put there he goes, he's gone down. He's not a tourist seal that one. Mike has actually climbed up on that and filmed from it. Now you can see the seal there. Another one in the background. There's two there. And a lot of kelp and weed there. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is dropping this down. Hit the bottom and I've got to come up quite a few turns first. The boat is as slow as I can get it going. Just on tick over, just trying to get it on tick over so it's pulling the lure through the water. So I let it go down fast, probably going to lose gear. It's a risk. I don't like the colour in the water either, but I can't do much about that. Let's hit the bottom. I just wind it up. There's, a There's either the bottom or a fish banging at it. There's his fish banging. Here we go, here we go. Quite tricky doing all this on your own. Okay, I'm going to try and set two lines in a minute. I'm going to drop down again. Hit the bottom. I've got to wind up because there's kelp there. There's a fish. There's a fish or rock, one or the other. Now, Smith, watch that rod. Somebody keep an eye on that. Also got to keep the right speed as well. Wish me luck getting the second one out. Twist that round for you a little bit. I've no idea when I'm going to get a take on this. So this one, so you know, is a regular. It's the unweighted one. I'm going to drop it down. No idea whether I'm going to pull that camera out of position. Hit the bottom. Oh! Ah, oh, that could have been a fish. Now if you get takes, generally let them just pull the rod right over. We could get lucky here people, we could get lucky and get a nice pollock. I guess most people just do this with one rod, I'm going to give it two. <clears throat> Could be another hour before the salt water comes in, pushes back that fresh water, and the fish feel a lot better with that. It's a natural environment, it's salt water, and they come on the feed. <clears throat> Again, if you're doing this, just make sure you go in a straight line, and when you do the turn, you won't bring at least one rod in, if not both. That way, when you turn, the lines don't cross over. If you do do a turn, very, very slowly. Well, I'm going to switch this off now, this camera, and let me work away, see if I can get a hook up. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
That was a bang. That was a bang. If it was like a small fish, 100% that was a bang. Sometimes you get the... Uh, oh, look, 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 double header, double header. Oh my God. <laughs> One of these could be a big fish. I've got to get him off the deck. Hang on, which is the biggest one? <laughs> I told you about... Oh, this is a bigger fish on the right. I've got to get him out of the kelp. Don't want to cross lines. I think this one's underneath. Nope. Oh, big fish. This boy's a bit bigger than the dabs. I've got no net. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh. he's absolutely swallowed that. Remember the size of the dabs, people. Remember the size of the dabs. Oh, how about that then? He's absolutely eating that straight down the hatch. I'll get him out in a minute. I'm going to try and get this other fish for you. I'm going to fight that from a dead boat now, taking the boat out of gear. Hopefully he's still on. He is. Woo -hoo -hoo. That was a smart money move. This one's on a red kill. Check them out, boys. <laughs> what a fish. Double head, I got them both. Check them out, boys. Double head of Pollock. I love it. So now what you can do, um, if you wanted, if you're doing solo fishing like I do, is rather than fish a pair of rods, I mean, I'm slightly different because I've got one uh, sidewinder that's got a weight on it and one, you know, a weight in the head and the regular which doesn't. But what you could do for turning, what I used to do is you could fish a lighter lead on that one, a weight on it, and a heavier weight on this. So in other words, you can imagine one's back here and one's there. So when you, when you look at it this way and you turn, you turn like that. If you're turning the boat, like I'm going into the rock now, you're turning like this and they won't cross. If you keep them both the same, generally, you get what's called convergence. The further back you put them, sooner or later they're going to pull together. The slightest turn, you're going to get stuffed. It'll be a big mess. And of course, if it's tangled, you won't get the fish. They won't take. I need to get a little bit closer. This does make me wonder, as I said, that uh, the flood water, the fresh water, which is all brown here, is floating on the top and it's clear down deep. That's what made me go for the weights and just sort of think it's a hunch, you know? That's a weird fish on the surface end. Look like a sunfish or something. Now, while I've got this run on this angle, Whoa, that is. What the heck is that? Something, oh, it's a bird chasing, chasing little fish. So that's a good sign. You see the birds are feeding. Now I'm on a good run. I'm straight. I'm just going to make sure I go down fast. Hit the bottom. There's the, I feel it come through the kelp. Just over the top of the kelp, I want to be. Smith, watch the rod. You can't watch the rod and drive the boat, can you, Smith? No. I can. Oh, 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 fish on the right, fish on the right. Somebody, Smith, get out there. Smith, for God's sake, man, pull yourself together. Look at this. I'm going to keep the engine going slowly because there's an outside chance. Somebody watch this right hand rod. It could slam over as well any time. Yeah, I've got, I'm in a good spot for Getting a double whammy, folks. Or losing it in the bottom. Three for three would be nice. I'm guessing it's about the same size, but there, there are some slightly bigger fish. Oh, God. There are some slightly bigger fish here. And, and this is one of them. Oh, my God. I should have a net. 
Bear with me here, people. I'm gonna hold the lure. Gotcha. Oh, ho, ho. my goodness me. Dab's for tea. Nobody's driving the boat. Straighten that up. And the sun's right there for the perfect picture. Look at that of a big pollock, eh? That's a cracker. Wow. Certainly showing you a few fish today. Come here, buddy, I'll let you go. Yeah, he's unhooked and I zoom them in like this. That way they get the rush of oxygen over their gills. Well, that could do. I'm gonna switch off, guys. Hopefully you got that take. That was a slammer. There's a fish on the left there. Well, that was a weird take. I think he actually took a comb towards me. Let's see which direction I'm in. Smith, watch that blue rod on the right, please. Oh! <laughs> Man alone in the boat. Strikes again. I'm constantly watching. So I've got the right trolling area and I'm putting the lures in the zone. This is another good fish, you know. Sometimes you can come out and you just get two or three pounders. These are big fish on the bite now. I figure it's the start of that fresh salt tide coming in. Now I can't take the boat out of gear to fight this fish. I can bring it in slowly. Oh my word, look at these fish. It's on the red gill. Yeah, if I take the boat out of gear, the other rod's gonna sink. You know, the lead to the bottom and I'll snag up. So I'm just gonna keep that going. Somebody watch that rod. This one's got a belly on it and a half. Fish on the right, fish on the right. Oh, Jesus, that's about, that's eight, nine pounds. Let's get it back. Holy cow. Oh. <laughs> You made me go dab fishing. This one's got me in the kelp, guys. Oh, he's got me in. I think I might be out, might be out. See, now I can take the boat out of gear. Whew. I've turned my jacket off, I'm sweating with all this. Goodness me. Some of the takes are slammers. <laughs> oh, just, the size of these fish is just ridiculous. I'll show you something as well. If I can get him out. If you look, look at the kelp he was taking me into there. And is that not a fantastic gold pollock? I mean, that's Irish pollock fishing at its best. Caught my sherry. Let's unhook you, buddy. Caught my sherry, look. In a self-drive boat. In a self-drive boat. Fish like this. Get real. Now I really am tired. I'll tell you what this reminds me of. It reminds me of salmon trolling we used to do off Vancouver Island. On the west coast at a place called Banfield. We used to go out there and go out at dawn. Obviously, mind-numbingly beautiful scenery, setting, <laughs> some really big salmon. And it was very, very similar to this. We would use a planer or a flasher and, uh, you know, send them down deep, or you might run a downrigger deep. I'm talking 60 to 90 feet sometimes. Average, I'm guessing, 40 to 60, depending where you can find the fish on the sounder. Can't even find the rock at the moment. Yes, yeah, very, very similar to that. You couldn't really fish a spreader rods unless you're on a charter boat. You'd have three, one down the centre, and then you'd have three anglers. You could probably get away doing salmon fishing with it on your own, you know, no question. A pair of rods, 
They normally have a pair of downriggers. Very, very similar. Sun's out, same sort of temperatures. But not 20 pound salmon, but very similar. I'm gonna drop those back. I think I might be too high in the water. It's very tricky trying to, it's something you can't sort of tell people. I've got no echo sounder. I don't know what's telling me. It's just the experience of fishing around this area that I think actually it might be a bit deeper here. I've already hung up once. You know, it might, might be a bit deeper. And generally what happens, the bigger the lure you've got, I'm trying to do a slow turn here. What? Oh, 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 I set the hook with the boat then. Yes. There's anglers and danglers. I just gunned the boat to set the hook because in a split second it took me to grab the rod, I might have missed it. And I'm still fishing the second rod and watching it avidly. I'll tell you what, if that camera's running, you guys must be getting some good action as it happens. And, and they get a run, here it goes on the right. Are you still there? Now he's on. Oh, and off. Actually, on the TA fishing show, come here, boysy. You get the real, real McCoy. Man, he has toasted that so far back. Dropping down again, got the head cam on this time. It's the bottom. They're very close to the bottom, but also the kelp beds are down there as well. And that's what they're hunting just over that. I'll tell you what, they do like this shad. That's the one on here. Just got to get that track right there. Two people is a doddle, isn't it? Everything in life. Filming with two people. God, don't make me laugh. How easy is that? One fishes, one films. Happy days, I know where to go with Mike. It's so easy, two of us fishing. I'm gonna stand back here. If you wanna come out, try and make a film on your own, all the different camera angles, using different cameras and trying to get setups and whatever, and catch fish in a short space of time. It's not like I live by the sea. You live by the sea, how easy is that? You just pop out, lovely. The door is open for business. My closest sea is 51 miles away. Come on boys, I think I'm too far off now. Well, maybe I'm going to try and bring around in a slow circle around here without crossing. Whoa, fish on! A hammering bite, he's still there. Got to just straighten up a bit. like wicked tuna. I'm calling this wicked wicked pollock fishing. I can't be doing all that stuff. You won't see me catch anything from the rod holder or electric reels. Not for me. I have used an electric reel for snapper oh, no, 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 no. snapper fishing. You know to get food, deep water. Smaller fish. It's going to go in a minute. What's happening is they're, they're plucking at the eel. Here he comes. Oh, he's on. I told you it would go. Oh, you people really should listen to me. <laughs> Look at that. I say it's going to go. Look, go. Oh. Holy crap. Sorry about that, mate. Sorry. Just, this one might be a biggie. He's got me in. He might, he might kick out. He might kick out. Well, I did say that one would go. I think this might be a one-way ticket. He's got me in the kelp. Right, what I'm going to do, the other rod's out of the way, I'm going to do a spin.
Then he goes slack. Lose a bit of line. Kill the boat speed. Probably still lose the fish. But sometimes pull him from a different direction. No. Or maybe, oh, maybe, maybe yes. Oh, these totally awesome tips. Probably not fish, it's probably a humongous amount of weed on here, kelp. He's dumped me in the kelp and then shaken off the hook. That will be my take on it, yeah. But well, look at everything back, you see, by, by pulling it back the other way. Look how he's got me in the kelp there, I'll just show you people. Oh, just fell off, look. Right, red kelp. Well, you've seen I can get enough action doing this. I'm tempted with that tide flooding to go out even deeper and put some baits down and see if we can't finish you guys off with a conger eel. What do you say? Yes. All right, Smith, yeah. I feel seasick, sir. You just puke in the bucket, don't worry. Uh, the other thing I can suggest to you, look, if you just go fishing and you catch one fish or the old fish, fine, you know, that's okay. Just fish as you're doing. If you're catching a lot of fish, like I consider I'm going through quite a large number of large fish now, on their jaws, on the outside of their jaws, it's very rough. And I'll tell you why, because I just cut myself there on them between that and trying to get my hook out. It's very rough there. And that will chafe through continually about three inches above the lure all the time, you know, where you're where you're hooking the fish and they're fighting, they're chafing backwards and forwards, rubbing over that same piece of line. So just feel it every now and then. If it's rough, snip it back three or four inches and retie the knot. I should have done it with the number of fish I'm going through and the size of the fish. I should have done it, but I haven't. But it is something I shall be doing if I stayed here, which I'm not, because I'm going to go and try and catch you guys something different. You can imagine it, how I could fill a fish box. Easily, easily fill a fish box with pollock this size. Just got to get that depth right. Old school fishing, no echo sounder. Just get my bearings off the, between the island, I think they call them transits, between the island and the clump of trees behind it. There's a run up and down here, depending how close you want to go to the rock and risk losing your gear or how deep you want to go, go save your gear, but catch no fish. There's a sort of honeypot lane here. I think I want to do a bit of a turn. <laughs> now we've got to wait for that one. It's just going to come around the inside and risk this. Let's get that one out. I want to get that turn in if I can. Some of these I haven't filmed. You might think you've seen them all. No, I've been pounding the fish. Up and down here, up and down. Big pollock. They ain't three or four pounders, some of these. Around up to about seven, eight. That's it, I've got the, I've got the turn in, so I might lose my gear there. And again, this is a popping rod, so it's, it's bent more in the tip. Good size fishes. Okay, still going straight. You see what I mean? They like this shad, probably more so than the uh, regil. Maybe the shad is going through deeper. Here he comes. Look at the size of these fish. Should have brought a net with me. That's another big fish, boys. That is a big fish. Look at the size of it. Now 
Look at the size of that one. There's the fish, and there's that background. In he goes. Straight back down. Right, I think, guys, I'm going to wait till either the snake gets up or get a fish. Um, and then we go and anchor up. To be fair, I've worked hard. I need a rest. And it could just be, if you look along there's a scum or tide line, it could just be mackerel that were out here along the tide line. But there is that many birds, it makes me wonder what was going on there. And they're sort of sitting, a bit like me, they're just waiting. Got a top shot of uh, braid on here, so that's going to be fun. Peace and solitude. Right, change of rigs again. I really am in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, let's get some baits on the bottom and relax. What an evening. Well, I've got four big baits on the bottom. I'm not altogether sure. Uh, Patricia says they go out and tie up to one of the boys, but it doesn't look like a crabbing boy. It doesn't look like a potting boy to me. It just looks like sort of a random one that's been there a hundred years. So I'm not going to give it too long here, give it half an hour and then I'll go in shore where I know it's rocky and see if we can't uh, lose a bit of tackle in there. But listen, I've had one bite on this rod. I'm just using great big chunks of mackerel. Anchored on the bottom, it's a good flow of tide. Can't say it's not a good flow of tide, it's a good flow of tide here. And uh, I might get lucky, who knows? I need a rest from all those pollock, that was fabulous fishing. There's the bite guys, there's the bite. Very sort of doggy looking to me. Very doggy looking. Now we've got something of an inquiry on this one. Probably, probably, I'm guessing, dogfish. I don't know. Oh no, it's just on the bottom, just pulled off. It's probably finally stripped the bait. In which case I think I might move in short. I've had one taken on that and nothing's come of it, so I have to make yet another move. And you can see already for me chasing those birds when the sea was flat the wind's come up again oh dear totally stripped hook i wonder what's done that i just has something of a sort of pick up on this rod just dropped down here just went sort of zooming off i don't know what it is i don't think that was a a dogfish it might be it might be a ray nothing else has come off from it do not see it being a dogfish, but it appears he's dropped. No, he's still there. He's swimming back towards me, to be honest. What is that? Do the drag out, Graham. That was weird. Dropped it, went racing away. No, it's I don't get it. Do not get it. That was a weird take. It might be because that stone on there is very light. I think I've got a stone on. Oh, what have I got? No, I've got. I've got a weight on there. Definitely put that down as a good fish. Well, sort of, if you look up there, changed yet again, clouded over. Lovely sort of burnished. Silver, I would guess you would call that, wouldn't you? Winter sort of look about it. I cannot seem to catch you guys a conga. This is the second time I've moved. I'm going to give it 15 minutes here. 
and I'm going to move in over there to the right of where I was getting the pollock because I know the closer I get there the more rock there is and just give it like a 30 minute spell there and then I've got 20 minute running by the boat to get to the headland and then back up the estuary but so far very very exciting day productive getting a bite on this one bit there a bit dogfish like I have to say tapping away but you never know it could be a conger just mouthing the bait I think I'll try and lift off I'm feeling some vibrations and sometimes an eel spins a small little so possibly a lost fish here oh, it feels like a dogfish I guess but listen, it's a fish, a fish is a fish, yeah, it's a doggy, I'd say. It had that sort of dogfish tug initially about it. I still think I'm going to move in another 300 yards. If I was over hard rock, I don't think I'd be getting the dogfish. It's more likely I'm over sand or slightly broken ground. Yes, it's a doggy. There we go. Don't splash the lens, please. He's going back. Boom. Apart from puking on Mark's boat. That's fish, not me. Well, I've just seen a small dolphin come up, scanning around with the camera, wasting footage and battery power. And of course, the minute I switch it off, he's going to show. All quiet on the third mark. So it's a 30 minute warning. And it's into the lifeboat, pub for a pint of Murphy's, well earned. Just look at that back there. And you wonder why you want to go in a self-drive boat. So to be honest, I'm standing up high on the seat here, hoping I'm going to see that dolphin, but I'm not. I wonder how the guys got on outside with their whale watching expedition. They saw them yesterday. Minkies, was it a minky? I wonder if they get humpbacks and stuff like we get in Mexico. I've had humpbacks come up by the panga women marlin fishing in Mexico. So close, they are enormous. But I'm more interested in the marlin. Come on fish, let's just finish one conger. We've had a great day sport, let's give these folks one conger eel or a giant bull hus. It is pretty quiet. So, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm looking forward to my breakfast tomorrow. I'm going to fill it my dabs there in a minute. Give it the five. It's a dogfish. I know it's a dogfish here, look. The five minute warning has come and gone. And that looks awfully to me like a doggy bite. Yeah, he's just dropped it. Anyway, I'm glad you could uh, tag along with us. I enjoyed it. Great day's fishing. Didn't get the conga, but by golly, we get some action on those pollock. Brilliant. The old Man Alone series came good again. See you next time. Hopefully I can get out one of these boats. Any boat that floats is fine by me. Well, sinking one would be much good, would it, Graham? Hit that subscribe button, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors. Try hitting the like bell. Also, why don't you hit the notification bell so you know when our fishing films go up. We'll see you next time, and I'm going to check out that sunset. Look at that.